Hey everybody, greetings from the dank basement. This is Uncle Squinty. It is like quarter to one in the morning and I have spent the entire evening Skyping and watching YouTube videos. But I have a story to tell you as I start on my pipe odyssey. Now a number of guys when I did my last video were very enthusiastic and they said, yeah man, you know, we're going to send you everything you need. We'll dial you in. We'll hook you up. I'm going to send you pipes. We'll send you some cobs. Get you some tobacco roll in here. It'll be great. And, you know, you can get started. Well, I got impatient. I was itchy. Because I really want to try this. Because I want to be as cool as the cool pipe guys. That's, that's the only reason I'm doing it. I have no desire to get pleasure from this. No, I just want to be cool. Okay, I would like another way of using tobacco, and I uh, think there's some pleasure to be had here, but I don't know what I'm doing. I really don't. I mean, I really don't. But I was getting itchy, and so I thought, you know what? I'm just going to go onto Missouri Meerschaum's website, and I'm going to buy the bag, if I can find it here. Yeah. This is their bag of smokable seconds. Okay, and there's some little defect in all of these pipes, but they're supposed to still be smokable. I got, you know, a couple of the larger, longer stem ones like this, and I got this weird one that's got, it's rounded on the bottom. It's not a poker style. I don't know if you can see that. And I got a bunch of other stems. A lot of, uh, I don't think I got a straight stem in the whole bunch. I think they're all bent stem pipes. And, oh, here's a straight stem. Cool. There's a straight stem right there. I don't know what this is. Maybe you can tell me what this is. Those of you who are experienced in the ways of the Missouri Meerschaum. This has got kind of a cool, almost a basket-shaped bowl, but you can see it's got a nice little nick right out of the edge of the, whatever you call this pipe part of the pipe bowl. And it's not, you know, but they're smokable. Probably, and it smells like a corn cob. Except a couple of them in here did not just smell like corn cobs. They smelled like shellac or something maybe even less pleasant. But I got them. This is one of them. This is full of Borkum Riff cherry liqueur. Yes, I know. Please, pipe snobs, don't come down on me and go, Oh, that's just crap tobacco. And you really need to buy the Penzance Stonehaven Throck frogger yeah 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 that that time will come that trust me it will come because i'm a lunatic when i get involved with something and i try to buy really cool stuff but anyway um so i wanted to break in this pipe and it smells terrible and so i went down to my local roll your own store now they they say it's a tobacco shop but calling this store a tobacco shop is a lot like calling McDonald's fine dining. Yes, McDonald's sells food. Is it fine dining? Mm, not really. And this tobacco store is, you know, they sell a bunch of uh, the good stuff and Farmer's Gold and OHM and Smokin' G and a whole bunch of cigarette paper tubes and filters and stuff for roll your own people. They also have a bunch of overpriced hookahs, overpriced charcoal, and overpriced shisha, and some of the most overpriced, terrible Chinese cobs and plastic pipes I've ever encountered in my life. But I asked them if they had certain tobaccos, and in fact they did. They had this Prince Albert. They had the Borkum Rift Cherry, which you can see I've opened. Cherry liqueur, if we're being precise. And we've got ourselves, uh, I'm not holding these up correctly, I know, I'm sorry, but just to show you that I did get them, I got some Captain Black Royal and some uh, Sir Walter Raleigh. I think I got the aromatic, I'm not sure. Anyway, those four ounce and a half packages of tobacco set me back 40 bucks. They're making money. That's pretty expensive, I think, for drugstore tobacco, and as a matter of fact, I've seen this packet of the Albert in particular on sale, I think, for four bucks. They wanted like eight for this. The Captain Black was almost 12. The bastards. Anyway, so the first thing I did, oops, the first thing I did was I tried to use some of the Prince Albert because I was going to try to get rid of that shellac smell 
And I read online that just smoking a few bowls through it will get rid of the chemical odor. And in fact, it's true. It was really unpleasant. The first bowl I smoked, I smoked, I packed it okay. I didn't have to relight it. It burned down to about, I guess, a third, uh, maybe a, a fourth left. And it was all just this nasty sort of like charcoal bits it didn't really go to ash and it started to taste really bad so i cleaned out the pipe i swabbed it out with a pipe cleaner and then discovered that this pipe had a paper filter in it let's see if i can find one so you can see it i took it out i actually took it out of a different pipe yeah it looks like this this is a medico paper filter and it goes in some of these pipes. Not all of them come filtered, but a lot of them do. And on the advice of other pipe smokers, I got rid of the filter. But the, the smell was still really bad. So I said, well, I'm going to go back to the one of the first tobaccos I tried to smoke when I was a teenager. And that is the delightful with the drawing of the sailboat. I mean, sailboat, the big sailing ship on it. Borkum Reef, which is a Danish-style aromatic tobacco with a top dressing of cherry liqueur. It's, uh, it was in a, a cake. It was really compressed when I started. But you end up with a lot of shreds of tobacco. And I'll show you. I'm going to put it in the palm of my hand and kind of, I don't know, maybe you'll be able to see that. Mm -hmm. There it is. I could get some better light on it. If I was a really cool pipe guy, like Captain Snuff Begins, um or Commodore, I think he's an Admiral, maybe, Snuff Begins, because he's cool. He's got a lighting table, and he's got stuff I will never have, including a good taste of pipe tobacco, as it would appear. So anyway, um, I smoked a couple of bowls through this during the day, cleaned it out between every bowl with a pipe cleaner, and then I decided I was going to pack a bowl to have this evening. So I did pack it. I did do the charring light. The charring light. It's mystical. I'm going to break the rules of my own house. where it, I, We don't smoke inside my house. But it's very late and there's like vampires and zombies outside. So I'm going to stay inside the house and I'm going to smoke this. What I smell from this, I'm not going to do a review because I'm not qualified. But what I smell in this is it's kind of like... It's more like dried cherries and maybe a little hint of rotten cherry. No, says the doctor to the elderly lady. Those are not crabs. Those are fruit flies. Your cherry is rotten. Uh, anyway, it's, that's why it doesn't smell very good. I'm going to try to puff this. I know, I know I should be using a match or a proper lighter with an ankle thing or, you know, a Calibri blowtorch that costs, you know, $4,000. It's a Bic lighter. Sue me. Do I look cool? I feel cool. I feel like I'm one of the big guys now. This just tastes like shit. It's terrible. I, the, the, that shellacky sort of taste is underneath the Borkum Riff, which I it's it's actually pretty tasty, but. And of course, I don't have a pipe tool either. I just ordered one. I actually ordered some tobacco from, um, what is it called, uh, pipeandcigars.com, and another one from Smoking Pipes. Try a couple of them. I think I got some good ones. At least they sounded good from the descriptions. One of the things I'm getting is called uh, Lane Limited Q1, which is a vanilla caramel, which that might be nice. Can you tell I'm starting with the sweet ones and stuff until I can really grow up and mature and start doing, like, English and flakes and... Virginias and Vapors. Vapor, by the way, if you don't know, I just learned this. It's Virginia and Perique blend. See? I'm getting smart. I'm learning. This pipe is going to go out. It's already gone out. Total pipe smoking fail on YouTube. Oh, well. I will learn. But anyway, um... It was really hard to find drugstore tobaccos. I was really amazed, like grocery stores, which used to carry it, 
don't carry the drugstore over-the-counter tobaccos anymore. I couldn't find any. Uh, and as a matter of fact, uh, even at my local Walmart, they had a few. At my local convenience store, they had a brand called Tin Star that I've never heard of. Like it's Chinese tobacco or something. And we buy it by, you know, $2 for a whole case of these little suckers and those old guys that smoke them pipes. You know, they just they just eat it right up at 8 bucks a pack. Anyway, um, so I'm looking forward to getting some good tobacco. That's it. That's that's me on my pipe odyssey for now anyway. So tell me what I'm doing wrong. Now you didn't see me pack this, so maybe you didn't you wouldn't know. I'm gonna relight this and see if I can get it to burn. I don't have a pipe tool. See my finger? It's all black. So I'll push it down a little bit, tamp it just gently, and try it again. I'm not getting any nasty juice or anything. Pipe isn't bubbling, which is good news. I'm sure it will because this is an aromatic, and I heard that cheap aromatics will do that. It'll cause bubbling, and they get goopy in the bottom. This does not leave nice ash. I smoked it all the way down, even though it was torture, the last bowl. And the ash is just nasty. It's like little cinders, you know, or little burnt pieces of coal. It never really went to a complete ash. And it was sticky, tarry. I also have not figured out that whole smoking cadence thing where you smoke it just enough to keep it lit and cool, but not so much that it lights the pipe on fire. I'm somewhere in the middle of that. Yeah. Total fail. Total fail on YouTube. Oh, well. Hey, listen, while I've got your attention, there's going to be a lot of great snuff reviews coming. I've got um, a whole bunch of snuffs from Old Mill Snuffs from Bethpage Farms. My good, uh, soon-to-be good friend, I'm sure, uh, Daniel, is making some pretty unique snuffs. The, his butternut toast is kind of like praline pecans and toast. It's delicious. You can smell the butter. I mean, I'm really eager to uh, to show you some of those. I've got some of his newest snuffs on the way, and I'll be reviewing those for you. Plus, I have a whole queue of other snuffs. I've got SP Scotch to review and a couple more Freiburg and Trayers. I've got so much snuff to review, it's going to keep us busy for months. And now I've got this stupid distraction. But I hope I can figure it out because it's going to be fun. Speaking of snuff reviews... Have you checked out Kentucky Snuff yet? Uh, Kentucky Snuff has now done reviews of a bunch of snuffs. I think he's got seven reviews up. Excuse me, my nose is itching like crazy, and I don't know if that's from the pipe or what. Um, and I don't have a hanky here, of course, because I'm not doing snuff. I'm trying to smoke a pipe, so it's just like me. Wait. Yep. Hanky. Oh, I want to talk about hankies, too. Uh, hang on a second. Okay, now it doesn't itch anymore. Anyway, Michael, Michael Dodson is his name, but he goes by Kentucky Snuff and do a, a research, do a search on YouTube for his channel. I will post the link to his channel, at what I have of it, down in the uh, description. And you can just click and go and watch his videos because they're, they're really very good. He's only been snuffing for a couple of months. But he's very insightful, very laid-back, friendly guy. And in his review of the six-photo cheetah, you get to meet his very cute, pure white German shepherd bitch puppy named Luna. Luna is just a sweetie. So it's worth checking out his channel. That is Kentucky Snuff here on YouTube. Go check him out. I mean, he's not as slick a reviewer as the likes of the very very slick and sophisticated Cousin Stuffy. Don't get me wrong. He lacks the panache. That's right, I said panache. Not panocha for my Spanish-speaking friends. I'm not saying panocha, I'm saying panache. He lacks the panache of a Snuff Begins. Snuff Begins is just loaded with panache. He's got so much panache hanging, so you got to go see him. Too. But Michael does really nice reviews. 
and I'm very happy that we're friends and we're trading snuffs and that he's getting started as a reviewer and uh, really worth watching. So, okay, let's talk about the hankies. Um, I believe that one should save money wherever one can. Otherwise, the hobbies, both pipe smoking and snuffing, can get to be kind of expensive. Kind of expensive is an understatement. There are, of course, hankies for sale at Snuff Store and at Mr. Snuff and Snuff Me and uh, several other places. But I found a really good website, and I'm going to post that link as well in the description for handkerchiefs. Uh, two bucks a piece for most of them. They're 22 inches square. They're good quality cotton. Uh, some really cool prints and uh, paisleys and whatever, polka dots. Pretty much any design you'd want. Excuse me, I have to blow my nose. I'm so sorry. It's not even a snuff review. What do you think? Oh, it was a, it was a spider up my nose. It was an actual spider. No, I'm kidding. Anyway, I go through a lot of hankies because I do a lot of snuff reviews. And handkerchiefs at Mr. Snuff go for about five bucks a shot. But you can go to, and they're, they're not as good as quality. These are not as good a quality as what the Bernard's product is that's sold at Mr. Snuff. But they're good enough, and they got cool patterns and cool designs. I think I got a couple of dragon-looking things. and You know, neat, neat stuff like that. And they're two bucks a shot, right? And the more expensive ones are four. If you just absolutely have to have the NASCAR-licensed merchandise, it's going to cost you six. The handmade tie-dyes are four and a quarter. But for their general print handkerchiefs, two bucks a shot. Shipping is cheap. You can mix and match. The more you buy, the more of a discount you get. So you buy 12 of these hankies. You don't pay 24 bucks for them. They knock 10% off. So it's a good deal. It's called wholesaleforeveryone.com. And I think, it's a, I think it's a good place to buy hankies. I think every snuff taker should have a pile of bandanas because you'll use them. If you're doing a lot of snuff, they're way easier on your nose, guys, than using Kleenex or paper towels or toilet paper. All those paper products have wood fibers in them, essentially. And after a while of rubbing them against the underside of your nose, they're going to chap you and just not be comfortable. But hankies don't do that. And they also absorb quite well and hang on to the dead snuff when you blow it out of your nose. So it's worth having them. You might want to check that out if you want to save some money on hankies. That's wholesale for everyone. Well, to sum it up, uh, Kentucky Snuff, great snuff reviews, wholesale for everyone, cheap handkerchiefs, cheap bandanas, uh, Missouri Meerschaums, the 10-pack of smokable um, seconds is a very good deal, actually, because, you know, that way you can have a pipe for every different kind of aromatic you like. You know, you don't ever have to worry about ghosting a pipe. Although I'm not sure you can ghost or leave strange odors in the uh, corn cobs. But, you know, at least you have a bunch of pipes in case you need to let one rest or something. And, you know, maybe some of them will have that sort of shellac -y or lacquer smell to them. But it goes away after a couple of bowls. They were right on the reviews and so on I read. So that's a good deal for 30 bucks. Uh, even with shipping, the cost of each pipe ends up being about three and a half bucks. You can't beat that. I mean, where else are you going to get a good quality smoking pipe for three and a half bucks? And there's certainly, even the dented and dinged and the sort of smelly ones are a better deal than some of the crap Chinese cobs that I saw at the Roll Your Own store today. Those were just terrible. So that's pretty much what I got. Please help me learn how to smoke a pipe. Because <laughs> I think I'm pretty clueless. From the dank basement in the wee hours of the morning with a runny nose from snuff. And a really bad smell in the air from burning shellac and Borkum Riff uh, cherry liqueur and my inability to properly smoke even a simple corn cob pipe with a simple to smoke tobacco. I'm hopeless. This is Paul, your Uncle Squinty. Thanks for putting up with me. Stay tuned. Lots of snuff reviews and my pipe odyssey continues. Coming up.